Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura, and today I'm doing another Manga Monday recommendations video. Today I'm recommending manga that are game-centric. Um, not necessarily sports, but more kind of on the side of video games and like card games, or games of chance, or um, you know, kind of gambling, that kind of realm of gaming. Um, there might be some crossover with sports, but we can talk about that when we get there. Um, anyway, this is just a topic that I find kind of interesting. I notice it quite frequently in manga. It comes up a lot, um, even if the manga itself is not entirely situated around a game. Games often will get uh, included at some point, some sort of chance-related gaming. Um, this happens really often in uh, Hunter Hunter games up here over and over. Um, this happens in Beauty is the Beast, which is a shoujo manga where the, the characters are often playing mahjong or um, you know, one of the the teachers or whatever is goes and plays pachinko. Um, so, like, it's it's prevalent and it's everywhere and it's um, a really common topic in manga. These ones that I'm going to show you, uh, it really is the bulk of the story is about the game experience, and I think they're all worth reading. So hopefully, um, even though some of them are out of print, you'll have an opportunity to pick them up somewhere or check them out from your library or something um, and be able to read them because I think they're all worth reading. Um, they might not be for everyone, but I think they're all pretty good titles. Um, anyway, I'm just going to get into it and I'll let you know about some titles about gaming. The first title that I want to recommend to you is Portis. This is by June Abe. It was published from Viz in about 2006, so it is a little bit older, but I have seen a few people actually pick it up in the last year, so um, I suspect it's not that hard to find. I don't know if it's still in print. I would suspect not, but it is just a single volume title, um, so it's completely self-contained. It is a mature title. Um, it is a horror title, and basically this uh, kind of takes a really similar concept to uh, the horror movie The Ring, um, which is also a manga, um, and it is really about a video game which has a curse on it, and when um, people start to play this game, they actually get so involved in it, and this curse ends up kind of driving them mad. Um, it is really disturbing. Um, it features Kokeshi dolls, which I don't know about you, but I find them incredibly disturbing, and so they come up often in this manga. Um, but it is, it's it's pretty gross. It's, um, it is self-contained, it's a pretty decent story, and um, it does sort of feature that maybe the more dark side of, or more dark fantasy side of playing video games and kind of how it will rot your brain, I guess, <laughs> the old the old concept. Um, I think people still have are trying to fight video games or trying to lay blame on video games. Uh, this one kind of shows how how uh, games can really affect you and and um, turn you into a monster in a way. Um, it's a really good story though and I really enjoyed it. I read it recently for the first time I think this last year and I had a lot of fun reading it, so I think you would enjoy it if you're into horror, um, in, if you're into kind of more of mature titles, then I think you should check it out. The next title that I want to recommend is Chihaya Furu by Yuki Suetsugu. This is available digitally on Kodansha, so you can get up to volume 9, I think, digitally. Um, it is not available in English in print. I do have this copy, which is actually a bilingual edition, so technically it's in English, but it only goes up to volume 2, um, and you can buy it on uh, online from Japan. If uh, you're interested in doing that, I'm really holding out hoping that Kodansha will publish this in a print format because I don't particularly care for a digital format, um, obviously. Um, so I am kind of waiting for that, but I think this might be the one where I break down and actually buy a digital copy um, because I do have a challenge in my uh, yearly reading challenge that I'm doing where I am supposed to read a digital-only release, and I think that this is going to be the title that I do that on. Uh, so this is a Jose sports manga, which is 
quite an unusual combination. Um, it is about a young woman who uh, gets really passionately involved in the game of Karuta. So she starts learning it as a young person, um, she is taught from a, a classmate who is very passionate about the game and he moves away and so she um, also becomes quite passionate about the game but she continues to play it in hopes that she will see him again. Um, and so that's sort of how this story begins. Karuta is a very uh, culturally Japanese game. I don't know if there is a full equivalent in uh, the West. I don't know. I don't haven't played every game out there. Um, but it does remind me a little bit of Slapjack um, and a little bit of Memory. So if you've played either of those two games you might have sort of an idea of what this is about. Uh, basically you have a number of cards. All of them have poems on them um, and you have a reader who uh, will read out the poem or will read out a particular phrase or word. I don't exactly know the rules. Um, and you have to listen to them. Um, you have to locate that card on your playing surface and you have to slap it out of the ring and claim it the first and be the first in order to have the most cards at the end of the game. So that's basically what this is. Um, it seems like a very unusual uh, type of game for a sports manga, uh, but it really works because sports manga are usually so character-centric, especially um, this one is very character-centric and it is more about, I think, the relationships between the characters, at least in these two volumes. Um, I haven't gone any further, but I've really been enjoying this. I think it's absolutely wonderful, and I cannot wait to read some more of this, which is enough for me to break down and pick up a digital copy. So um, I would highly recommend this if you're interested um, at all in sports manga or Jose manga or um, just sort of like really good character stories. I think you'll enjoy this one. A little bit older title, but it should still be in print, and another unusual sports title, and that is uh, Hikaru no Go by Yumi Hota and Takeshi Obata. So Takeshi Obata, of course, is from um, everyone's sort of dream team of mangaka. He's the illustrator of this manga, and it was written by Yumi Hota, who is actually a female author, um, and it is a uh, shonen sports manga, but this one is about the game of Go, or Ego. Um, this is sort of a game that is really similar to, I guess I think people equate it to like chess or shogi. Um, it is really complicated. It is way more than I can even possibly explain, but um, I originally was introduced to uh, Hikaru no Go through anime, and because the anime was so engrossing and so exciting, um, I was completely taken in and ended up going out and buying myself a Go board, um, which kind of is in the closet now because it's just, it's impossible. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I don't know how people play it. It's, it's really, really difficult and it's such a long game. Um, and for being such sort of like a tedious, difficult, long playing game, this is sort such an exciting and fast paced uh, sports manga. You know, like normally you would think sports manga or you want a really quick game like basketball or volleyball where people are moving around quickly and you can get, uh, you know, you're yelling and you can get injured and stuff. And this is literally two people staring at uh, a board, a game board, for hours and just placing little stones. But it is so exciting and the characters are so great. Um, and this one is wonderful because it is following characters from um, about sixth grade until high school and so they do uh, develop and mature and age as well as develop and mature and age in their game. Um, this one follows uh, Hikaru, who is this uh, boy here on the cover. Um, he ends up uh, going into his grandfather's shed to look for things to sell to make a little bit of money and he ends up coming across a go board, an old go board, and when he's looking at it he sees a blood stain on it and it turns out that this particular go board is possessed and because he can see the blood stain the, the ghost that is possessing the go board ends up possessing him and so um, you find out later that this ghost is actually, or was a teacher from the Heian per period, where he actually taught uh, the game of Go. And so now he um, is coming back and he desperately wants to play the game of Go. But more than him playing the game of Go, Hikaru is learning to play the game of Go. Um, 
early on in the story, in the first volume, he ends up coming across another young boy who's about the same age as him named Akira, um, who you can see here on this particular cover. Um, and Akira is passionate about the game of Go. And Hikaru, of course, is is sort of any kind of lazy uh, grade sixer. He's just playing for fun, you know, he's just letting this ghost play, and um, he sees the passion in Akira, and it entices him into the world of Go, and he becomes sort of lifelong rivals with each other. Um, it is a really good, again, character-based plot. It is really quickly paced. It is just such a wonderful story, and I would, um, and for me, probably one of my absolute favorite sports manga, so I would highly recommend that you check out this title. And it's not too long for sports manga, it's only 23 volumes, so uh, definitely worthwhile. The next title I want to recommend to you is actually a shoujo manga, um, and this one is a unique game called Chaos. Um, this is called King of Cards by Makoto Tateno. Um, if you recognize the name, um, she is a pretty popular yaoi artist. Um, I think her most popular, most well-known series is Yellow, so if you uh, read Yaoi you might be familiar with her. Um, this is not Yaoi, this is uh, shoujo manga. Um, this is basically the story about a girl who has a crush on her cousin, and because her cousin is so involved in this game called Chaos, she wants to start playing too. Um, it's a really similar game to uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh card game that you would play in real life, not necessarily the one that you would play in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, this one I think actually is kind of fun to read with Yu-Gi-Oh just because it does feel sort of like almost the real world version of being passionate about Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, at any rate, uh, so she ends up going to buy a starter pack of cards and in that starter pack she ends up getting the most ultra rare uh, card that ever existed, and people uh, didn't even realize uh, that it existed. It was sort of like the stuff of legends, and so she ends up getting this wonderful cart and ends up getting kind of pulled into the game. Everybody who has found out that she has this card, of course, are coming after her and trying to battle her so that they can win her card from her. It is uh, sort of somewhat about her learning the game. It is a little bit about the battles that she uh, plays against these various um, different card players, um, but mostly it's sort of about um, how she, because she is so kind of innocent in this game, and she loves these cards, um, and she sort of uh, kind of uh, loves them in a way that as though they're they're real, like they're her children, or she sort of believes in the heart of the cards, as you would hear in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, it, it, because of this sort of like pure passion that she has, she ends up defeating a number of uh, pretty strong card players, and they end up kind of changing their perspective on what this game is. Uh, so most of them are in it for money, or they're in it to like hurt other people, or they're just in it to be you know really strong players, and they have kind of forgotten the heart of what this game is, which is it's a game. So she sort of is transforming people's opinions. Um, it's got a little bit of a fantasy element to it, because she does uh, dream about the character that is on this rare card, and he kind of gives her hints to how to defeat upcoming battles. Um, so there is sort of that as well, and unfortunately I don't have the entire series, so I can't tell you if it doesn't actually become a little bit more pronounced in later volumes, but um, I actually have recently read this. Uh, I've just read the first two volumes so far. I'm going to keep going, um, but it is so fun to read. It is just really enjoyable. Again, the character relationships are really fun. It does feel like shoujo manga, so there is quite a lot of romance and you're kind of, you know, trying to decide between which boy should she go after, you know, kind of thing, but it's, um, there's more to it and it, it is a really kind of a fun and unique story and it definitely feels like that real life world experience of uh, playing some fantasy card game. Um, so I don't know, I just, I really enjoy this and if you have an opportunity, if you find it somewhere, I would say pick it up because it is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I definitely will have my eyes out for missing volumes in my particular collection. The last 
title that I'm going to recommend to you is another new title, and this one is being published by Yen Press, and that is Kake Gurui by Homura Kawamoto and Toru Naomura. Um, I only currently have volumes one and volume two, and again, because I was making this video, I wanted to make sure I read this, and I really enjoyed it. I think I am enjoyed the second volume much more than the first one, and I'm hoping it'll continue in that vein. Um, this is basically the story about a high school that um, is for like really wealthy uh, students. They're basically kind of um, the oldest child of different conglomerates, and they probably will end up leading in the business world when they come of age. Um, so this isn't really a school to teach them kind of the basics of math and, and writing and, and all of those things. It's the, the school that will teach them about, um, you know, being conniving and tricking others and bluffing and all of those really important business skills, I guess. Um, so in this one, uh, the school has a caste system that is really about uh, your winnings at gambling, and so students will constantly be gambling with each other, playing a variety of different games, not necessarily poker. And I th went into this thinking that this was going to be like strictly poker, which is fine, um, but this isn't, and they come up with kind of creative games that you can play, that you can bet on, and in a way, a lot of games that you could actually create in real life and play. Um, so I was kind of tempted, I was reading a couple of them where I was like, oh, that actually sounds like a fun game, I want to play that. Um, I certainly wouldn't be betting, you know, several hundred million dollars on these games, but um, I think a lot of the games seemed like a lot of fun. Um, this is basically the story about a young girl who is just entering the academy. Um, she seems like a very sweet and kind of innocent type, but she becomes um, incredibly sadistic and deranged when gambling comes into play. Um, so gambling is sort of the heart of her passion and obsession, and it is really almost to the point of disturbing. Um, she's also very good at it. Um, but it's not necessarily that gambling um, in the concern for like gambling as, as gaining status. It's more just that she enjoys the thrill of gambling, the thrill of losing, the thrill of almost losing. Um, and so I really particularly like a character like that. And so I was really happy to find a character that's like that. I'm not particularly a fan of all of the art. Um, I think that it's sort of a 50-50 for me. There's some, some aspects of it that I like and some that I really don't. And even as sort of a plot, there doesn't seem to be a lot going on. And maybe it was that I really enjoyed this because it was just at a point in my life where I was feeling really upset and I needed something kind of uh, dark and sadistic to kind of bring me out of those those emotions. This one was a perfect perfect match for my mood at the time, so that might all have kind of come into play, but I actually think this is a lot of fun to read. Um, I think that it's sort of unusual, you get kind of hooked into the games, I think it seems um, a little bit more logical, at least the gameplay itself. Um, you can see how people have bluffed their way through things, the, the, the results don't just seem completely like pulled out of thin air, like there is sort of a reason for some of this. Um, because the school situation itself is so extreme. So there's kind of um, pluses and minuses, but I, I think this is more plus than, than anything. So I was really pleased with this, um, I think more so than I was expecting. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this title, and uh, especially since it's a new title and you can actually still pick it up, I would recommend it and give it a shot. And I'm very curious to see if anybody else is enjoying it as much as I am. So anyway, that's it for this video. Um, those are the titles that I recommend. There are, of course, tons of others that I could have been recommending. Would love to know, have you read any of these? What do you think of them? I also would love to know if you have any recommendations that feature gaming in some way in them. I would love to hear about that. Um, this is an ongoing series of videos that I am doing. You are welcome to participate as well if you want. If you have a YouTube or a blog or something else that you want to be participating, um, I will have a link up for where the topics are posted, so if you are interested in checking out what future topics are, you can definitely go and check those out. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.